Hello and welcome dear viewer. Today I have another tutorial for you and this time it's for a personal reason that I want to do it. Recently I had the task of transferring old footage from an old camcorder onto modern hardware and into a future-proof format. If you know anything about the camcorder technology of the late 90s and early 2000s, you know that the common format used back there was digital video or in short DV. DV is kind of an odd format quite honestly. It used tape like this, but other than most tape formats that ever existed, it's actually digital with a compression method not unlike JPEG. They were only really phased out by the rise of flash media towards the end of the 2000s. But until then many amateurs had these nifty camcorders with them, like the Sony Handycam DCR HC24 that I have here. This device is pretty much exactly 20 years old and surprisingly has no major issues with its tape drive. Oh yes, of course, all of the demonstration footage today will be modern things I shot in 2020, like fancy handheld pans of obsolete cassette formats. Just for comparison, this is my Google Pixel 4a 5G with built-in image stabilization recording 4K 60fps. Crazy how technology advances. Let's get to the tutorial. The first step, of course, is to make sure you have all the hardware and that all the hardware works individually. Get out your old camcorder or buy a used one that still works and make sure that it works. These mechanical tape drives have quite the habit of failing, even after only 15 to 20 years. Put in one of your cassettes and make sure that it will play back just fine, including audio. This is all we need. The recording part does not need to be functional at all. And this is also the place where many initial errors will occur, so I want to go over some of them. The camcorder doesn't turn on? Your battery is probably dead. Many camcorders will refuse to turn on even with external power on a dead battery, so remove the battery and power the camcorder just externally. If you don't have DC in, you may want to find a replacement battery. A reinsert cassette error occurs after loading a cassette. Oh god, this seems to be a really common error with Sony camcorders and I get it pretty much every time I insert a cassette. In short, there may be several things wrong. First, make sure that no moisture has collected inside the tape drive. Leave the drive open in your working space for some hours. Second, try inserting the cassette. Then when the error occurs, just remove the POW without properly turning the camcorder off. Wait about a minute and plug the power back in, go into play mode and try playing the cassette. That should do the trick. I suspect that some tape related sensors are simply reporting bullspit, because nothing ever failed in these scenarios. And yes, you may need to do this almost every time you insert any cassette. I need to at least. Some other solutions may involve giving the camcorder a good smack or two, as well as trying different cassettes and manually rewinding them some amount. Some people needed to reinsert a small plastic ring on the roller that clamps and transports the tape. I have a video linked in the description if you want to try that. The camcorder still doesn't work? Really just get a cheap camcorder that does. The recording quality is irrelevant at this point, it should be able to play back any DV cassettes just fine. PS, here comes a part I never thought I would do. Shocking, right? If you have a Hi8 camcorder, more specifically a Digital8 camcorder, you're in luck. This format is essentially the DV digital standard slapped onto a Hi8 cassette, which in itself is more or less a small version of the analog SVHS reduced in size for camcorders. Basically every Digital8 camcorder you can find has firewire as well and all of these steps and probably solutions work exactly the same as with a DV camcorder. I however want to add one piece of help that I encountered while trying to get these high 8 cassettes to run. The cassettes I have here were in fact recorded with an analog camcorder, but the digital 8 camcorders will digitize them for you. Neat! However, the video was almost unreadable and only live preview fast forward would show any signal at all. I managed to fix it by simply rewinding the tape to the beginning, then recording half a minute of digital 8 video over the cassette. For whatever reason, this made the analog section of the tape, here signified with the Hi8 logo, playback without any major trouble, including the hi-fi stereo audio. Anyways, back to old me. So now I assume that your camcorder works, it can playback and hopefully also rewind. Next, we need a computer connection. And before you scream at me, I see, my camcorder has a USB mini B port that connects to my modern computer, that's easy. I have to disappoint you. Many of these devices aren't even USB 2 yet. 
and all of their USB output is garbage if you trust any sources online and in the manuals. Besides, I was not able to get my camcorder working over USB. So the solution is to use Firewire. For anyone that has forgotten, the USB competitor was on top of the game back then, so most to all camcorders will have one of these mini Firewire connectors. Now I'm not going into the details here, but you can't simply adapt Firewire into USB. That's because the protocols are fundamentally different. There are pretty much two options, PCIe and Thunderbolt. If you own a Mac or any reasonably recent good laptop, Thunderbolt is your option. If you have any desktop computer from the last quarter century, my god, PCIe is your option. If you have some laptop of the in-between times, you could try a mini PCIe adapter for which you need to disassemble your laptop and probably detach your graphics card or something. I've used a PCIe card on desktop which does the trick just fine. Even though Firewire is pretty much a dead standard now, Windows does still have drivers for it and macOS should too. Mount your Firewire card slash adapter and it should just be detected. On Windows, open Device Manager and look for a top-level entry called IEEE-1394 Host Controller, under which a device like OHCI VIA IEEE-1394 Host Controller should appear. Yes, I don't know what any of these abbreviations mean, but IEEE-1394 is the technical name behind Firewire. Linux users can just check the relevant PCIe devices with lspci pipe grab i firewire and use dmessage pipe grab i firewire for troubleshooting. Mac users, you will just have to hope that Steve Jobs blesses your computer and makes your adapter work. Finally, it is time to connect the two devices. Make sure that the firewire cable you have does actually work. Mine didn't. After that, turn on the devices and connect them. Just to be safe, put your camcorder into playback mode. Now on Windows, you should see an image processing device popping up. These are things like scanners and webcams, but if your camcorder isn't anything special, it should just appear here. The great thing is that the drivers for these things are standard and already part of the kernel, so you shouldn't need to install anything. On Linux, check that a slash dev slash fw device pops up that doesn't have the number zero. Apple people just hope that it worked. Next, we want to actually access the device in a live playback so that we know it works. The one and only software you should use from now on is VLC Media Player, available on all platforms for free. This thing is magic. It reads and writes all formats that were ever invented and will ever be invented. Click on Media, Open Capture Device. In the video device name, you should be able to select some device that seems to be related. To find out what you need, take note of the options before turning on or plugging in the camcorder. On Windows, the device is most definitely called Windows TV Camera and VCR. This would be the time for Linux people to do some kernel debugging and for the Apple users to buy a non-Apple computer if things didn't work. But seriously, good luck getting the old drivers to work on modern computers. If you need to do that, you're on your own. Once you get to this step, not much should be going wrong. Just to be absolutely sure, deselect the audio device and reselect the default audio device. I had audio issues sometimes when I didn't do this. Next, never ever ever change the advanced options. Even if you're having aspect ratio issues like I did, there will be no video if you do this. Also click on show more options and select a buffer time above 1000 milliseconds or one second. This will especially be important for later recording the footage and I have had consistent results with 5 seconds and above. Now just click on play. You will probably see nothing, but that's fine. Start the playback on your camcorder and as soon as it shows any footage you should see something in VLC as well. And here's something too. The stream will be delayed by your buffer time. If things didn't work, VLC is probably still showing a faint red bar bouncing around in the playback area. This means that it cannot properly connect to the device and you need to check your previous steps. Also, to make sure that everything is correct, click on Tools, Codec Information. You should see two streams, one with DV video and one with PCM S16 LE. Now we're on to recording. The critical thing to notice is that while simple playback can quickly adjust to changes in input format, recording cannot. So I'm always taking a few extra measures that come from my experience in having many recordings with failed audio, video or both. So for recording, you want to go through the same steps as before. 
making sure to select a decent buffer time, but now click the arrow next to play and select convert. This is the screen you already know if you ever used VLC to convert between video and audio formats, but this time you want to select dump raw input. Yes, your computer may be able to do H.264 live re-encoding of the DV stream, but in my experience it never worked. We want to literally transfer the exact contents of the cassette into a file so that we can later work with it in any way we need to. Select a file name that ends in .dv. And here comes the important bit. Put the play position of your camcorder right before the segment you want to record first. That usually means the very start of the tape. Start playback and wait until your camcorder shows video and audio. Then click start in VLC. If you don't do this, the video may be fine, but the audio will most likely be missing or glitched. I lost about 5 hours to this issue and this is why I want you to carefully follow these steps. After starting the recording, VLC will show a 00,00 time position, which is fine, and it may also show an orange buffering indicator, which is also fine. The best way to check that VLC is actually doing anything is to use task manager or your system monitor to check that VLC is writing to disk with about 1.7 to 2 megabytes per second. Now of course, your recording started in the middle of some possibly important clip, so what you want to do after starting the recording in VLC is first wait about 10 seconds to make sure the buffer is completely fine. Then rewind until before the clip you need, it is now ok if you hit a section of tape without data. Now you'll have to wait. Recording needs to be done in real time, so cassettes take an hour to 1.5 to record in full. If you only need specific sections, use your camcorder's video feed to check when to stop VLC's recording. A quick note of warning, you can't end VLC normally after you're done, and most of the time you can't even stop the recording. This is fine, the files are readable at any point in the process, so just wait until you are assured that VLC is not writing to disk anymore after the tape stopped and then you can force close it. Now you should have a raw DV file and because a hundred things can go wrong, I would advise you to always check the recording. First is the file size. Standard play cassettes are 12 to 13 gigabytes and long play are 18 to 20 gigabytes. Yes, you heard right. If you have a lot of cassettes, be prepared to use the largest storage devices you have available. The 25 dv cassettes I had to transfer added up to exactly 441 gigabytes. In this context, make sure your hard drive uses a file system that supports large file sizes. All standard OS file systems will work. Next, try playing the files in VLC. Usually they will be opened automatically by it. Check for audio and video and check multiple points in the clip to make sure that all parts are fine. Because many DV cassette recordings may be segmented, some segments can be fine while others were corrupted. You can use the tools codec information again and you should see the same output. If you encounter an audio issue where the audio is present in regular, short, high pitched blips, you are suffering from audio type mismatch errors. Again, no details, but 12-bit and 16-bit audio will be decoded incorrectly if one follows after the other in a single recording. Follow the process of starting a recording again, but this time start with the first clip that was having a different audio bitrate, which pretty much certainly is not the first clip of the original recording. Check the file again, this time at least the clip that you started with should be working. Repeat if necessary. Yes, this will be cumbersome and there is no way to check in advance, but I only saw this on two sets from 25 and only had to do about four re-records. The final steps are where things may diverge again, but next we obviously need to convert into a modern video slash audio standard. Open VLC, click Media, Convert, Save. The file menu should be visible. Drag in your clips or click on Add to open a file selection. Click Convert Save. Make sure that Convert is selected and, very important, Deinterlace is not selected. VLC's Deinterlace is very imprecise and we will deal with the interlacing artifacts later. Select the H.264 plus MP3 profile, which should have no additional settings selected internally. Because you probably selected multiple files, you cannot choose their target location. 
but you can append a dash converter to the file name in case you want to make sure. Click start. Even though your computer can probably encode these videos at over 10 times speed, this will still take a while. Also in between conversions, it heavily writes to disk while not showing proper output, so don't be confused if it seems to pause for no reason. Watch and check the finished mp4 files and maybe also put them in another video player. The other option may be to do the conversion with ffmpeg and if you can do that, you shouldn't be watching this tutorial. So essentially you're done now. You can archive the footage just like that. But for all the people with higher needs, this is where you need to get into video editing. This will allow you to separate disparate recordings, fix the common aspect ratio errors and finally deinterlace your footage. At this point you should look up some general tutorials on video editing if you can't do that yet, so I'll only be giving some pieces of advice. DaVinci Resolve is a great choice because it will do more than you need for free. The scene detection will allow you to speed up the process of separating clips on the tape. Unlock the zoom sliders and adjust the X scale to fix aspect ratio errors. I found that 1.44 is about right for converting 4 to 3 into 16 to 9. For deinterlacing, I would recommend the OpenFX MISC package, which has a very good deinterlacer. Visit them for information on installation and usage. Just two words of warning. I didn't get the plugin to work on an adjustment layer. You will probably want to work with compound clips and put the effects there. Also, it's horribly unoptimized. It's slow and even on powerful PCs. And that's all. I recommend you create a spreadsheet like this to keep track of all the stuff you've archived and what issues you encountered. This helped me a lot in the entire process. Until next time, goodbye.